Welcome to the Computer Repair Podcast, episode number 298, Channel Pro Network. I'm your host, Jeff Hallish. This is our live show where we discuss the ins and outs of running your computer repair business. We are joined today by Rich Freeman and Matt Whitlock from the Channel Pro Network. How are you doing, guys? Doing great. Excellent. Thank you for having us. Ed, awesome to have you. I'm glad we were able to hook up our schedules after all this time and uh, actually get together. So this was good. Hey, how long has this been in the planning? <laughs> uh, quite a while. <laughs> I lost track of the emails, sending them back and forth. So, and I know Paco was, uh, he was sending some of the emails back and forth, trying to get a hold of you guys and trying to work it out. So I, I'm glad we were able to get together on a Monday evening. It's a little outside our, our normal live Sunday show. Um, but uh, people, we've already got a couple of viewers. So that's good. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and start. And Rich, I'm going to throw it to you and have you kind of tell your origin story of basically how you got started in tech and to up to what you're doing now. I, I mean, you want me to go all the way back? You could go back as far <laughs> as you absolutely want. <laughs> so, I mean, here, here's the story. And we're going way back Um uh, to like the early nineties, basically. So I get out of college and I went straight into graduate school thinking I was going to be a professor somewhere. And then that lasted for a few years until I realized that was a really dumb idea. <laughs> and then I took a break. I, I was, um, studying back East. I decided I'm going to take a break, rethink this, went out to Seattle um, and I'm looking around for work. A friend of mine who works for what we would today call a VAR, um, said, Hey, look, we just had to get rid of our receptionist while you're looking around for work. Why don't you just come in sub for her? You can use our computer and job hunt, et cetera. And great. Sounds great. I was there for about two weeks. And one day the boss calls me in and he says, I need you to put out a classified ad in the, the local newspaper out here. We need to hire a technical writer and here's the job description. And I said, you know, I, I think I know a guy who might be able to do that. And, and that would be me. <laughs> um, and even though I had never done this before, I convinced him to, to let me do it. And so I, this was my entrance into the technology industry. I was a, a technical writer. I wrote user manuals and stuff like that. And, and over time, I sort of gradually started doing uh, marketing writing as well. And um, uh, eventually, I was uh, contracted out to do a bunch of marketing writing for Microsoft. And then they eventually said, hey, why don't you come on full time? And I was there for about nine years. And then, uh, which was great, it was a great nine years, but, um, you know, very tiring. And it kind of took me away from writing, which is what I really like to do. So eventually I said farewell to Microsoft and uh, became a, a freelance writer and editor. And then one day in, uh, gosh, it was about November 2006, the phone rings. And a guy who had been a vendor for me when I was at Microsoft named Michael Siggins, calls me up and says, we're launching a magazine called Channel Pro, and I need somebody to help me invent this thing. Are you available? And I said, yes. And that's pretty much what gets me uh, here today. Michael and I started with nothing but a, a logo and an idea, you know, a, a dollar and a dream. And, and uh, we launched the first issue of Channel Pro March 2007, and we've been doing it ever since. Awesome. That is a great origin story. And so you've got a lot of experience in the in the tech industry, and obviously a lot of a lot of experience writing and et cetera. So that's uh, that's awesome. It's <laughs> a great story. All right, and Matt, I'm going to throw it over to you and uh, go ahead and tell us your origin story. And feel free to go back, just you know, maybe not out of the crib or anything like that, but you know, when... <laughs> <laughs> let's say you know there was a, a gigantic bang in the universe and matter and energy whenever. No, um, I think my background is probably going to be much more in tune, I think, with your audience, because I'm more of a, t of a hardware guy, uh, more of a technology nut. Um, <clears throat> so I can say that my background in technology goes back to well before I was 10 years old, very big into, into video gaming and that kind of thing. Um, I got started in, in computers, I should say. I, uh, I built my first computer when I was 12. Um, I can still remember all the specs. Unfortunately, I don't have it anymore. I I really, really wish I kept it, uh, but it was a 486DX250 for Ooh. anybody who wants to know. Nice. Um, and I did, and I built that, and I've just always been a, a, a big hardware nerd junkie, taking stuff apart, putting stuff together, um, and uh, big into software uh, as, I, as, I, as I got older. And my first job 
that was related in technology was uh, was at a software store because um, you know I love gaming, so it kind of kind of made sense. Um, from there, and that was see what was it was like mid nineties, ninety five, ninety six, somewhere in there. Um, after that, I did a stint at Radio Shack, and, and when I tell people that, people always kind of laugh. But this was kind of back w- before Radio Shack went all out into cell phones and remote control cars and this was when they were still very, very hardcore into the components and the, the technical stuff. Um, and Tandy had a lot of great training programs and books and classes and stuff that they, that they offered employees optionally to learn. And I, and I just, I learned all that stuff. So it, and it was one of the greatest um, experiences I had teaching me a lot of the nitty gritty of, of tech, like what makes tech function on the back end. And uh, from that, I, I, from there I went into, Oh, I went to home theater sales uh, for a small home theater company. And uh, that's a long story, but I'm getting to how I got to where I am. But uh, there I learned a lot about AV. So I have a huge background on AV installation. I was selling, you know, $10,000 surround sound systems to people with more money than brains. Um, <laughs> and from there, from there, when I was at that, at that uh, particular location, I started writing a newsletter. Um, and I, and I won't be, I, I won't lie. I was very, I was listening to a lot of Kim commando back in the day and I was getting her newsletter and, um, I was very inspired by what she was doing. Cause I loved her newsletter cause it was informative and, you know, it's still it's selling stuff. So I'm like, Oh, I'm going to do a newsletter for our store, for our company. And, um, we were collecting, we had been collecting email addresses for two years at that place and never did anything with them. So I'm like, Hey, let's send out a newsletter. So I started writing a newsletter just like how Kim Commando would, because I didn't have any other option. But I was writing all the content for it. So it was tips and tricks on how to hook stuff up, how to tweak your picture settings, how to troubleshoot things. We'd have stuff in there to sell. And then from there, um, one of our customers uh, was receiving that and came to me uh, and said, hey, I'm building, I want to build a website that's all around helping people get more out of technology. Um, and uh, he wanted me to come on board and write all the content for this website. And I, I, and I did that for a long time. The company was called Capable Networks. The site was techlore.com. I don't know if it's still around anymore, but um, I wrote all kinds of stuff. From there, we partnered with all these other big tech companies like, um, like TiVo. We owned the TiVo community. We bought that a, a while back. Um, have you ever, you ever used a Slingbox back in the day? But, but I know about, yeah, but I know about them. A lot of people. Yeah, do. lots of lots of people who would watch this, I'm sure, know what a sling box is, especially back in the day. Um, and we we uh, uh, operated the sling community for sling media, and we ended up working with HP a lot and building um, uh, communities for HP, the like the uh, you know the Media Smart server. Um, we ran we ran the community for that, so we're doing a lot of that. And then um, I started getting contracted out to help other companies. Um, including Channel Pro, uh, they were having. Uh, all this time, I've been learning a lot about web development, and so I've beca- become a very good uh, front-end designer and web developer through this process of working with this other company. So they brought me in and contracted me to Channel Pro to start helping them with stuff. And uh, <laughs> uh, turns out, I ended up liking that more than my current job. So that's how I ended up at Channel Pro. <laughs> wow. About what was that? Rich, five, six years ago now, I think somewhere in there. Oh, at least, yeah. Nice. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere in that neighborhood. I went 2012 or 2013, something like that. Okay, awesome. Well, that's a great origin story. And yeah, a lot of times, I think, especially in this industry, no matter where you come from, a lot of us have similar backgrounds. And uh, so that's that's exciting to, to hear the things that you actually use, which unfortunately or fortunately, whichever way you look at it, I actually remember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I won't go into mine because everybody kind of knows my backstory. Uh, but anyways, so. Well, I have a question for you, though. So how what's your origin story for hooking up a channel pro? Like, how did you find out about us? That's a good question. So uh, I think what it ended up happening was you guys came to an event in Chicago and we had been to a CompTIA event that year. And I think this was around 2000. I want to say it was 2014 or 2015. Can't remember. Maybe 2015. And so we came out there for the CompT event and talking to a couple of people. Uh, my buddy was like, hey, we're going to go to this Channel Pro event in Chicago, which I think was like a month and a half or two months later or something like that. And so we said, yeah, let's let's go do that. So we went and got a, got a chance to uh, meet Michael and 
uh, talk with him a little bit. And I really liked the way you guys put on a presentation and the vendors and things that you had there. We're like, oh man, if I, if I was going to do an, an event, this is what I would model it after because I really like you guys were, you people got in and got out and, uh, you know, we were able to, to hang out with the vendors in a vendor hall and all that kind of stuff. So I think at that point I signed up probably for channel pro network, got the magazine and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of people relate to this. My wife laughs at the, at the channel pro magazine Could you, <laughs> because every time she, she, she pulls open and sees the, the cover of the magazine. Now, some people might find this offensive, but as we all get older, we start to thin a little bit on top and that's just kind of the way it is. And she laughs all the time because most of the people on the front of that magazine are usually bald or, you know, <laughs> I'm like, it's chemistry, honey, it's, that's what, that's, what's doing it. It's, it's all the stress and anxiety and everything <laughs> doing what we do. <laughs> you know, Rich, we got to go, we got to go to Joel and tell him that we're, we're selling the wrong advertisers. We need to go to Rogaine and we need to go yeah. to a bunch of them, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. So th yeah, that's kind of how we got involved with with Channel Pro and just kind of been watching them the whole time, uh, you know, over the last few years and stuff. And I, I was telling Rich earlier before the show, I didn't realize you guys had a podcast. So once I realized that, see how much I pay attention. I basically went out and subscribed to the podcast and listening to the last couple episodes. And excellent, excellent job. So um, I didn't listen to your first episode, so I I kind of really really don't know where you started from, <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> But, but the stuff that I was, I was into, uh, you know, I think you were, you're in the nineties somewhere around there, right? Yeah. Of course we have a, uh, we, we've recorded a few that aren't out yet, but we've got, we're up to 92, I think public. And I think okay. we're up to 96 recorded. So we're a little behind, Okay, but, right. um, but yeah, the, the, the podcast stuff is a fun one. It's one of these things that we I think we've done very little promotion on actually, I would say rich. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. and, uh, we, we did it because, um, at the time, are uh there was there was uh, three of us at channel pro network um myself rich and um the late cecilia galvin who used to be the executive um editor of uh of channel pro um we would get on these on these conference calls and then afterwards we would end up just kind of the three of us sitting in the conference call and just talking about stuff and we'd have these really amazing dynamic conversations that were just so much fun and there was there was humor because i'm a big goofball and i like to tell jokes and um, Rich likes to, to run with my jokes and Cecilia, it was, it was fun to make laugh and, and, but we would have these really engaging conversations and we're like, we just need to record this and put it out of this podcast. And essentially that's what we did. <laughs> Rich, do you want to add to that? No, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's absolutely true. Um, I, I always say to people, if, if you were to, um, listen to the stuff, listen to the three of us or now the two of us interacting before we start recording or after we stop recording, it would sound exactly the same. There, there's really no difference between us talking to one another off the air and on the air. It really is just, for, for better or worse, it really is just kind of hanging out with us um, as we talk about, you know, the news and, and other content up on the Channel Pro website and whatever's happening in the industry. Yeah, it's, and we have a uh, we, we we have a, a, a saying that, I, that we like to use a lot on the show. If you've listened, if you, I don't I don't know how many of you said you've listened to, but um, if we like to we, we we talk about very serious topics, and there's no shortage of um, serious content for for tech people. Um, but we we de we definitely try to get people in the channel and VARs and immigrators and MSPs and those who are running businesses the the content they need, the information they need, um, the broccoli as we call it. But we like to make it taste good. So we, we try to keep things very, very light. We try to have, we try to have fun because if you don't have fun, nobody's going to listen to it, you know? Um, and, I, and you probably noticed our events are the same way. I mean, we had a lot of, a lot of great serious content, but um, let's see, if you were in 2014, I'm sure I was doing something that was, that was fun. Did I do the game show or did I do something else? Uh, you're asking me to remember that far back. I don't remember. <laughs> what I <had> back then. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't, you know, I don't remember exactly what, uh, I remember there was, you know, there was a nice room where we could go in and we looked at a lot of technology and I actually, it's funny, the, I actually have the Intel nook that I won from that event sitting underneath my desk, hooked up to my secondary monitor that I use for, uh, chat and Skype and other things for producing this show. So, 
Uh, okay, so that was when we were still doing a petting zoo. Um, yeah, so I would I would spend two days of my life building that giant room of of toys and set and technology, and a, there was probably a rack server in there. And, oh, it was awesome! It was like, oh my gosh, you walk into this room and you're just like, <sighs> it was just it was so yeah. If you love so, hardware, oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Now I'm, right now I'm doing a game show uh, in hardware, which is a, a, a lot of fun. Um, so if you check out our show. Let's see. We must have missed the one in Chicago. We did. You, you didn't. You must have missed the last one. I don't. Who knows what we're going to do next year? But we're coming back to Chicago next year. Yeah, that's what I heard. So yeah, we'll, we would definitely probably see you there. So <laughs> very cool. So you guys now you work for Channel Pro Networks and you've got a podcast. You've got the magazine going on. So what are some of the what I would say core benefits of being a part of the Channel Pro Network? And again. I'm going to preface this as saying that you guys are what I would say is kind of like us too. We're the normal Joes in, in the tech industry. And we just, we, we try to keep it real because again, nobody wants to go through, you know, stats and, and statistics all the time and, and get all this, you know, boring stuff. They want, Hey, how can I be better? And what are some practical tips? So wh where do you guys see channel pro as far as, what benefits they bring to the tech community? And it's kind of a rhetorical question because I already know what the answer is, but I want you guys to probably <laughs> answer that question. <laughs> well, you, you know, I mean, what, what you just said is exactly what we view our mission to be, um, essentially. So, I mean, as we look at uh, our differentiators, basically, in, in the, the media space, the things that set us apart are we are 100% focused on the SMB channel. So we're not the only people who write about the SMB channel, but you'll have trouble finding anyone else who is, is as dedicated to it as we are. Um, and we are um, very, very heavily um, uh, oriented towards business growth uh, strategies and advice and information. So we cover the news, um, we review products, we do all the, the things like that that you would, you would want from a, a regular news source. Um, but we also um, provide really good in-depth, meaty, um, and quite often peer-to-peer -peer, uh, information about what is next in the industry, um, what kinds of services you should be looking to add, um, what kinds of marketing or sales tactics you should be looking to adopt they are going to make you more successful, what kinds of operational best practices you can use to lower your overhead and in improve your profitability. So it's really... Um, it's a wide ranging um, uh, pool of information that we bring to you that, that ranges from what broke, what news broke in the industry today to what kinds of strategies can you be pursuing now uh, that will make your business more valuable when it comes time to cash out, you know, five, seven, 10 years from now. It, it, we're really just um, dedicated to helping our readers um, be better, as you said, to, to be more successful. That's good. Now, I would, so a lot of people that listen to the show on a regular basis know I hate three letter acronyms. Um, I just, I nev I've never got it. But, anyways, what is, so for, from a practical standpoint, what does SMB stand for? <laughs> Small and mid sized business. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and I say that because literally there are people that they'll hear sometimes these acronyms that people will throw around all the time and they're like going, they'll wait years before they actually ask the question and go, what does that mean? So sometimes it makes a little more sense when I ask it and bring that out. <laughs> you know, the, the harder thing to, to answer, um, and I find myself asking this question of vendors all the time. I'm, I'm constantly doing, you know, vendor interviews, covering the news, and uh, everybody knows what SMB stands for, but um, most vendors define it differently. So um, at some companies, SMB goes up to you know companies with 500 users. At others, it's a thousand users. So I'm I'm continually level setting with people. Okay, so what do you think SMB means? <laughs> That's good because you're right. Exactly. I, I think a lot of people don't. I've always asked that question. What is the number? And really, there's a lot of varying answers out there. So I you know I think of you know a lot a lot of times for what a lot of people are doing. You know, you think about small businesses. A, a small business to me is like, you know, five, 10 computers. And a lot of people will be like going, oh, that's, yeah, but it can go up to, so, you know, it, it just depends. So, yeah. Yeah. And at IBM, you know, mid-sized businesses are making $500 million, right? It, it's all <laughs> your frame of reference. So. 
to me, that's a large company. <laughs> <laughs> I would think so too. <laughs> It, yeah. it in the grand sense of things but i guess hey you, you can paint it however you want to, you know basically and whether you're doing something for you know five workstations or a hundred workstations there's not a whole lot of difference uh, you know maybe when it comes to servers and whatnot but um you know, really a lot of us are doing the same exact things just in a hopefully uh as you get in large companies as, in a more expedient fashion you would hope <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and you know, the interesting thing, is, so, I mean, I, I would say without having the statistics in front of us that the, the bulk of our readers um, are really the outsourced IT provider to their clients. But as you get into that mid-sized business space uh, and businesses with a, a few hundred users, you know, sometimes there is an IT guy on, on staff. Um, and so it, it, there's that whole dynamic of collaborating with somebody who's in, in-house and um, divvying up the responsibilities and so on. Um, but most of the time, I would say most of our readers really are, are taking care of those clients on their own. Okay. That's very good. So, so Matt, where do you, what, what do you see as far as obviously you've been with, with channel pro for uh, a shorter period of time, but what, what are some of the benefits and things that you have gotten out of it or things that you see that are important for the, uh, you know, listeners and readers and, uh, people who peruse the network and, and whatnot. Yeah, so we we have we have the magazine, and um, uh, my my task coming into the Channel Pro network was was to kind of bring the the web presence up into the up into the modern age, um, which which was which was a lot of fun. If Rich <laughs> remembers, there was a, a few different iter- iterations of websites and um, <clears throat> stuff like that, but. Uh, my my job is to handle all of the all of the digital infrastructure behind Channel Pro, and we have a great magazine, and I highly recommend it. I'm glad we still do it because we're we're, we're like the last, certainly the last um, I channel focused magazine that's that's uh, that's out there. And unfortunately, we've had to scale that back a little bit just because that's that's the modern times, you know. Um, but the but the web presence uh, offers a lot. We offer a lot of news. Um, each and every day, um, we, we get a lot of the big stories up there. We have a great directory um, of vendors. Um, so if you're looking for vendor information or looking for stories related to a particular vendor, we have a great way of doing that. Um, we've got a lot of great surveys. Um, I'm sure you get links uh, in your mailbox all the time to take surveys. And we give away a lot of prizes, but we, get, but we have a lot of original research from that that um, provides some really uh, great uh, content for our readers to to learn about like where the state of the channel is, the state of the business. Um, we we again we have the podcast now, which is of uh, uh, we 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 enjoy it. You know, it's it's kind of long sometimes, but uh, we we cover we cover a lot of ground and we have a lot of fun um, doing that. That's right. Well, what else am I missing, Rich? We've got we offer we offer a lot online these days. Uh, we offer our live events. I've gotten a a, a lot out of that um, over the over the years, and we're do, we're doing a lot of uh, digital summits now. So uh, we we know that we can only physically go into so many places per year. Um, so we're taking some of the some of the lessons that we teach at our live events, and we're wrapping those up into kind of digital online summits uh, for uh, for our readers. And that was kind of new. We've we've done one. I think we have another one coming up in December. But that's kind of a new way of uh, of getting education training from us. You know, the way I paint some of these where you're getting away and actually going to these conventions is that sometimes you need to get away from your business. Sometimes you actually need to physically rub elbows with other people in your industry and just talk shop in a relaxed atmosphere where you're not, you know, having to take care of the customer and stuff while you get away and kind of get a chance to regroup. Because I think a lot of times people will get caught up in basically putting out the fires all the time and never take that time to basically invest in themselves and learn something that can make their business better. It's like, Hey, I, I'm too busy to be able to do that. So I'm just going to keep putting these fires out until I wear out. And unfortunately, one of the big things I've seen too, is a lot of people do not last the test of time. A lot of people get out of this business because it, you know, either there's a better opportunity that comes down the way or whatever. And a lot of times I think it's because they don't have the real people telling them, Hey, yes, this does happen. Here's how you can, here's how you can get around that. Here's maybe a couple processes that you can, you can fix to make your life that much better. 
And it, there's not too many companies out there doing that. And, and I, I applaud you guys because I, I think you're one of those companies that actually comes out there and, like I said, is the real, the real deal and is just really trying to help people in what they do. I don't want to take away Rich's, Rich's thunder, but I, I'm going to anyway because that's <laughs> what I do to him. Uh, one, of, one of the things that, I, that surprised me about coming to Channel Pro, because I came from, a, from an AV and hardware kind of background, you know, consumer facing. And the business side is, is very different when you're talking about the channel. And, and the information that channel IT providers need is very different than what end users would need per se, because you're not talking to always someone using a product, but somebody, re, you know, somebody reselling a product. And they're a business in and of themselves. Um, so we, we definitely fine, fine tune our message for those users. But I, the other thing that I always found very interesting is we focus so heavily on trying to get um, peer-to-peer kind of stories, which, which touched on this. But a lot of the speakers that we, use, that, we, that we interact with and a lot of the articles that you'll see, um, we, we are, we're not giving you some kind of like, oh, this is like a business analyst guy who has no idea what the channel is or IT. He's just a business guy. These are people who were, were MSPs or were break fix guys or were um, VARs and integrators. And they're telling you what worked. And I find that more valuable because if, if it worked for them, it, it's more, far more likely to work for you. It's not pie in the sky information. Right. That's good. And, you know, I'll point out, um, we've been publishing our monthly magazine for over a decade now. And with maybe two or three exceptions over the course of 11 plus years, the person on the cover has always been a channel pro, an MSP or, or a VAR. I mean, it, it, that really is part of our identity um, is that this is, you know, for and, and sometimes by uh, that, uh, that channel community out there. Those are the people who we really are, you know, it, um, it's not that we don't have um, vendor related content in there too or up on our, we do, but the people we really are most excited about celebrating are the folks who are out in the front lines and, and doing it and, uh, and you know, to whatever extent we can help them share what they've learned with other readers and help other readers be successful too. That that's um, that goes straight to, to what we're about. That's awesome. Now, Rich, I do have a question for you. As far as, because you guys, as Matt alluded to earlier, you guys have this print magazine. Now, I'm, everybody else has gone away from print magazines, has, has gone digitally. And, and I will tell you that I am more likely to pick up a magazine and maybe it's my age, I don't know, and read it than I am to digitally look at something online and read it there. Do you find that there's, are there, uh, is there a lot of people that are kind of going towards the digital way or they, they really still like that, uh, that printed model? So we, um, you know, we, we have stuck with distributing this magazine on paper as much as we can for, for years and years beyond almost anyone else uh, in the market. And the main reason we've done that is every year we go out to our readers and we ask them, do you value getting this magazine on paper? Does it make a difference to you? How much of a difference does it make to you? And consistently the uh, response to that is always, we love getting this magazine on paper. Please continue getting giving it to us on paper. And so um, we had it on paper 12 times a year up until this year. Now, I mean, the, the economics in our industry are just brutal. Um, and it's, it's been, uh, you know, from, from our perspective, uh, congratulating ourselves a little bit, it, it's been a, a heck of an accomplishment to stay on paper as long as we have. This year, um, eight of our 12 uh, monthly issues were on paper. Uh, in 2019, that drops to six. And we're hoping to kind of hold the line there. I mean, this is, you know, we're, we're, we're putting as much, paper, as much paper out there as we can, um, basically, because there are a ton of people who really just like consuming the information that way. And, and I don't know what it is either, if it is, you know, um, uh, an older demographic or, or whatever, but um, we, we get that feedback a lot that um, it, it's a great thing to, to uh, be able to read the magazine that way. Very cool. And so how many, how many events do you guys do during the year? Cause I know you're all over the United States, as far as I can tell uh, it, from the list I've seen before on your website. We do uh, well. Uh, the last several years, we've done four four events a year that we that we produce, and these are just these are just live events. Um, the the digital events you're going to see more of those as as time goes on. But we're not slowing down on the on the live shows. Um, they're a huge hit. They're a huge success. Everybody seems to really really like them. 
um, and get a lot out of them. Um, we're actually doing five in 2019. Um, so we're adding a fifth. Um, so we're going back to, oh, uh, well, the, we're doing the four in the United States again, um, Chicago. Uh, Rich, help me out here. We're doing San Jose. Atlanta and New Jersey or the metropolitan New York area. Right. And then our fifth show, we're, uh, we're, we're breaking out of the country and we're going to Toronto uh, for, uh, for a show uh, up, up in Canada. Nice. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. There's, you know, it's amazing how much, uh, that's amazing how many companies are actually up in Canada that we use in our businesses down here in the States. Um, it's, uh, it's something else. There's a lot of vendor offices up in Toronto and there's a, and, and it's, it's an underserved uh, market for events. There's a lot of channel guys up there uh, who would absolutely love to have a live show and just not it's, it's uh, whether it's cost or whatever the, the dynamic is, it's a lot harder to do a show in Canada. Unfortunately, I don't have to plan any of that <laughs> or work out of any of that red tape, but, um, <laughs> but I'm excited that we get to go up there and do a show because a lot of people in Canada um, in that Toronto area have asked. That's <clears> awesome. Yeah, I was in Toronto a few years ago, and it's a uh, it's a very interesting place to go for sure. It's a uh, it's a it's a neat uh, demographic in that area. So, and uh, especially for business. Um, and, I, and of course, I'm excited to come back to Chicago next year because uh, <laughs> you know because then I, I don't have to fly anywhere because <laughs> that's a that's a local show for me. Well, and and that's how our, you're in the Chicago area too, right? No, I'm actually in uh, Michigan. So oh, you're in Michigan. Yeah, about three and three and a half, four hours from Chicago. Um, I'm kind of center center of the uh, southern part of the state. Um, so yeah, it, it, actually Toronto is only about the same distance too. It's about four hours, except the last time we drove there, it took so long to get across the border, and it took us about seven and a half hours. But <laughs> should have. So you're saying you might go to the Chicago one and not the Toronto show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you come to, if you tell you what, if you come to both, there's a guaranteed T-shirt in it, in, in it for you. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you guys move around your events? Like, I know it, you haven't been in Chicago every year. Do you kind of just move around to different states to try to uh, get more people that are closer to those areas? Yeah the the uh, the main pattern is we we tend to go to the cities where we get a a, a good crowd um, every other year or so and then we'll mix in new cities uh, as well so I think this is the second time uh, 2019 will be the second time we've been to Atlanta um, for example and you know we we tested out that market before and uh, it you know we do a good crowd and we, this year was the second time we've been to uh, Dallas similar kind of thing we we went the first time. Um, there were clearly a lot of people who, were, and this kind of surprised me. Um, Dallas is this enormous city, and it's a, an enormous metropolitan region. But we we got a lot of feedback from people at that first show that there really aren't a lot of uh, live events in Dallas, and so there was um, there was just a, a lot of uh, interest in attending our show. Uh, and then we drew a, a good sized uh, crowd again this year. There, there's clearly a, an appetite for it. So we, we tend to go back to the cities where um, people really are into the content and, and we, you know, we feel like we're going to um, uh, fill a room with people who are uh, eager to hear about what we're uh, discussing. Very cool. And that's one of the things I, you know, talking about how you guys have fun in your podcast and, and it sounds like you guys have a good time, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, um, just, just getting together is this, what you're doing though. And I'll, and I'll say this in as nice a way as possible. Does it get tiring? <laughs> Rich, I'm going to let you feel that question. Yeah. First. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> physically tiring. Sure. Sometimes. So, I mean, I, 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 I totaled this up recently by that, by the time we get to the end of the year, I will have traveled to, I think 34 different conferences that I'll have covered. I don't know. It's, it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one correspondence of weeks on the road and, and conferences attended. Sometimes it's two in one week, whatever. but I do quite a bit of traveling and that does get, you know, as, as you get to this point in the year, that does get to be physically tiring. But, um, just in terms of, um, uh, you know, do I get tired of covering the industry, writing about the industry, write, uh, writing for our audience? I really don't. Um, I, and I, you know, um, whatever this sounds like, it's the truth. I, I just consider myself one of the, the luckiest SOBs out there. I hope, I hope that didn't cross the line. No, but, you're um, good. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> but uh, I, I consider myself really lucky because I, I get paid to write about stuff that really interests me and to talk to really smart people who interest me and even, you know, to travel to all these conferences and see what's going on. And, uh, you, you know, I, this is my job. I actually get, uh, I collect a paycheck to do something that I find really uh, interesting and a lot of fun. So that, that does not get old. Nice. Matt, how about you? Oh, I, I, you know what? I, I will say this. I do so many different things for channel pro uh, that I, 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 I can't say I get bored because <laughs> I'm I, in, in one week's time, Rich will attest, I'm doing web development. I'm doing, uh, you know, writing. I'm pr producing our events. I'm, I'm planning game shows. I'm, I'm putting on funny costumes and recording videos. It, what, I'm, what I'm working on is um, always interesting and always new and always different. And fortunately, our, our boss likes to, likes to take a lot of, I don't want to say risks, but he likes to experiment and do a lot of new things. So um, I, I'm not getting bored that way. And I, 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 I love, I've loved IT I've, and computers and technology for as long as I can remember. So um, I, I, don't, I don't get bored of that. I'm glad that Rich is the one that's on the road. I got, I got two kids. So uh, <laughs> with him around, uh, I don't have to, to travel quite as much as I used to have to do. Um, well, no, I love it. And I love, uh, and, I, and I'll say this too, and I'm not trying to butter Rich up or anything, but um, uh, Rich is a, a, a phenomenal uh, editor, a great writer, smart as a whip, he works hard. Um, he's a lot of fun. And, and he's not the only one here at Channel Pro who I w would consider our, a friend. Uh, everyone that works here at Channel Pro, and we're, we might even be a little smaller than you think in terms of staff, um, but we we all get to, we all get along really well. We all work together. Um, and we just, we love, I think we all love what we do and that hopefully shows in, in our products and, and what we put out there. It, it, I just want to bring that up because a lot of people, I just want to realize, or I want, I want the audience to realize that people do things and you can tell that you guys are passionate about what you do. You do it for the love of doing it. Yes, you get paid for it. And I think everybody should get paid properly for you know spreading good knowledge and in information but at the same time you know that you've got and this is what i want to drive home is the real people with the passion that are trying to help others out there and it's there's not a lot of that left in the world today i'll just put it that way and so it's it's a it's fresh to see guys like you coming you know coming in and just loving what you do and, and that's why, you know, like I was saying, I feel so lucky and we're all really so I, and I, I totally agree with everything Matt just said about, you know, on top of everything else, we really enjoy working with one another. But I mean, it, it's it's not easy to find that gig, um, basically, where um, you can make a living doing what you're passionate about. And uh, one of the things that I love about our audience and our readers and, and writing for them is that um, so many of them have done that. You know, um, they, they, they went out and they took a chance. And I, I just have uh, uh, worlds of respect, basically, for anybody who goes off on their own and launches a business, um, especially if they don't have an MBA, haven't run a business before. But, you know, a, a lot of our readers, they've gone out on their own and they've, they've gone into a line of work that they really love. Um, and uh, there, are, there are a lot of people in the world who are not, uh, not that fortunate. And uh, it's, it's great for all of us that, that we are. Absolutely. I noticed that Rich agreed with every wonderful thing I said about him. A absolutely. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Checks in the mail, Matt. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so let me ask this about the podcast. And, it, I, and I can't remember which shows I listened to, but it, it was the last couple of shows that you, you just had out. And I remember somebody saying, uh, or maybe I read this on the website. I can't remember. Anyways, something to, to the effect of, you know, we said we wanted to, we, we've, we've talked about this for a long time and finally, gosh, darn it. Now we're just going to do it. So, I mean, where did you guys, what was the thoughts that were going through your head when you said, Hey, let's do a podcast. Let's do something more than what we're already doing. <laughs> I, 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 I'll, I'll feel this to start. Cause I was, I was the one pushing on this for a long time. Cause I, I really believe that, um, especially in the IT industry, um, passive education experiences is, is, works really well for those in IT. When you're driving to a job site, when you're, 
when you're doing dishes, when you're, 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 when you're in IT, you're always so busy with other stuff. You don't have a lot of time to sit down and read sometimes. So I have always wanted to do something that was more, you can consume it passively, you know, just on doing other things and you can listen and learn. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll let Rich kind of go from there because he might remember better how, not, how we really got started. But I was always, want, I was really, always really wanting to do the passive experience. And it's also why, even to this day, it's still an audio only program. We don't do video. So I, I, people are asking for video. We probably will do that at some point. Um, video, but, uh, that's all I'm going to say about <laughs> video is the world. I, why people want to li look at me talking into a microphone, I have no idea. But some people do, apparently. Uh, but Rich, you, what was the hard part of getting started? What, do you remember what the, op the onus was that, that did it? I know it was hard to get Cecilia to do it at first. I mean, I, I, honestly, I think the key thing was it, it was this idea that everybody thought was a great idea. But, you know, we were all stretched so thin. It was ju just kind of making it happen. Um, and that, that was the thing. I, I, it's like, I don't always know how to do something, but I'm pretty good at, at like, you know, deadlines and, and flogging people. And, and so there was a point in time where I just decided I'm going to start, you know, scheduling stuff and then we'll kind of figure it out. And I think that was what kind of got us over the hump. And then pretty quickly, we just got into a rhythm with it. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll say, you know, for a show called channel pro weekly, um, we're, we, we don't have the greatest history of always being weekly. But I do guarantee shows come out in a week, one week of the year. It's it's a it's a day of the week that it comes out. There you go. Hey, it's an advertisement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so now, would you say because a lot of people now come on, guys, really it, doing a podcast that's just sitting down behind a mic and just talking and enjoying yourself, and it's really easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, as, as someone who, as, as you know. Uh, there is a little bit more to it than just that. <laughs> it, there is there is some some work involved, but uh, but it's worth it. We do it because we we enjoy it. Uh, we enjoy talking. We enjoy um, getting uh, a lot of prominent guests and speakers on. We've been doing a lot more of that recently. Um, we've so we've, even just in the last what five six shows, Rich, we've had on. Um, I think both Carl and Manuel Palachuk on two different shows. Josh Liverman. We've had uh, Eric Simpson on. Um, you know, not small names in, in the channel and in the IT industry. So we've got a lot of a lot of really smart people coming on to talk and, and, and educate as well and have fun. You may amaze who who loves to be on and have fun and talk. Exactly. Well, and that's that's the other thing, too, is, yeah, the last couple. I think uh, I heard Manuel uh, talk and uh, you can tell he just enjoys just sitting around chatting. And that's why I love the the, the, the kind of free form with the news type of thing where. You're giving out good information and it's just it's it's more organic because you guys do just love to have a good time and just chat it up but at the same time you're giving out that uh, that good information so. that's why we call rich captain serious because he's <laughs> the one tasked with doing all the news and it's my job to see if i can derail the conversation into weird areas F and we fundamentally <laughs> that's the dynamic basically is i grown on about the news and Matt tries to actually keep it fun and uh, and somehow it works. There you we've, go. Had, oh, we've had some good ones. We've, we've gone every, everywhere from uh, robots taking over the world to goats. Interesting. <laughs> you never quite know where we might wander in the middle of, uh, of a podcast. Yeah. That's, that's pretty interesting. I know uh, we had a show, uh, one of the guests wanted to come on and talk about AI in me and one of the other guests were basically the whole time we're going as we're, we're all going to die. It's yeah. <laughs> this AI thing. We're just, yeah. You know what? Skynet and all that. Yeah. We're, we're done. If that happens, we're done. <laughs> like he goes, no, no, it's more than that. So, you know, it's those things that are they're fun to talk about, but at the same time, you're kind of like, yeah, I understand all this deep learning and all these things that, you know, computers are supposed to do for you and, and whatnot. But, it, and it is important. It's it's stuff to look you know look at. One of the things that I had just heard in a podcast today, and I hadn't thought about this, but they're talking about higher end workstations, and a lot of people are using for CAD and in uh, uh, you know video and uh, cartoons and stuff like that. And be, because I know one of the one of my friends actually does the the high end workstations, 
for that type of thing. And, you know, these are, you know, thousand dollar machines, you know, 5,000, 10,000, you're like going, and people are actually using these things. And you would have never thought, you know, everybody will tell you in this industry that now nah, everybody's getting away from this or everybody's going to, you know, tablets and phones, which I've kind of poo pooed that for a long time, but whatever. Uh, you still, a lot of times need a computer to do something that like doing this. The last thing I want to do this on is a tablet or a phone because <laughs> it's not as nice as what we have here. <laughs> yeah, I've actually, uh, I wrote a column uh, kind of about this topic, Rich, a while back called Form Factor Zombies. Um, and basically it goes to talk, I'm, I'm with you. Everybody says, you know, desktops are dead, but actually there's no computing form factor that has ever been invented that, is, that has ever gone away because they all fill purpose. They all fill purposes, niche purposes for particular tasks. And when you're, you know, designing and rendering 3D cartoons, a high-end workstation is the tool for that job. Um, it's, a, it's a very interesting article. We talked about all kinds of form factors that everybody says is dead. And, uh, and, and we go through a bunch of them that they're all still around. Some maybe, you know, desktops certainly are not in, in their heyday as they were, you know, 10 years ago, but, uh, but they're still there and there's still advantages to using them. Right. And, you know, the other thing worth pointing out, a, a segment of our audience is in the uh, custom white box system builder market, which is not, you know, the, the healthiest segment of the channel right now. But um, the folks who make those high end workstations, uh, you know, like right now, the, the two good places to be if you're you're in white box manufacturing are those higher end uh, workstations and the higher end gaming machines that those are selling well. Yeah, I believe it. I just rebuilt, uh, actually, the the, the uh, computer I'm on right now, I just rebuilt it uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, basically, <laughs> this is, I, I, I basically build a computer every three years and probably mm -hmm. spend right around three grand. Um, and that's building it myself. But the reason I did it this time was because I had this, this fan. And as I'm trying to record a podcast, this fan kept, it would ramp up. It was a zzz, zzz, I had, you know, a nice all-in-one cooler on there, but something was not going right. So I said, you know what? I'm going to basically get a, a medium-sized box. I'm going to put these components in there. I'm going to give it plenty of air. I put a humongous three-fan radiator on this thing. It is so whisper quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Over on the corner of my desk, and I'm like going, that is so much better. It is so weird, and I'm like going, and I spent how much to get all that quiet? But it's so much, right? So <laughs> Yeah. You get to enjoy that all day long. Exactly. There you go. So it, was, it was worth it to me. And then, you know, a lot of people get mad when I say console gamers aren't real gamers, but whatever, you know, people get <laughs> Oh, you're, you're, you're poking the trolls there, right? <laughs> oh, I'm with you. I, uh, I'm, I used to be a big console gamer. I'm not much of a console gamer anymore. I got, I got introduced to steam and introduced to steam sales and it was all downhill for me. Yep. Uh, last count was uh, 550 for me. <laughs> oh, I can tell you what mine is. Hold on, hold on. Uh, and I can, I can promise you, this is pathetic. I, I just did a post on Facebook not too long ago saying my hobby is now buying video games and not playing video games. Exactly. Hover over the library tab. I know two of these are free to play. Games 1,055. Oh, you make me feel so much better. See, now I can tell you, there's something that's worse than me. <laughs> and that's just Steam. That doesn't include GOG. Yeah, or um, uh, exclusives on Humble, or you put the UPlay one, or Origin. And yeah, I have uh, I have a pro Rich knows I have a problem. <laughs> I need <laughs> professional help. <laughs> now the other thing too, I think one of the segments on your show, you you talk about uh, museum hardware, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm glad you I'm glad you you listen to the end. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I have a uh, I I like to call a a a, a hobby of collecting uh, old old hardware, old technology. My wife would call it a disease um, and a serious strain on our marriage. No, I, I, I wouldn't go quite that far, uh, but I, I, I can't throw anything away. I love old stuff. I love to see the evolution of technology. I've all, and I've written articles about it. I talk about it. I like to see how things were and I can go down to the basement and I can grab, you know, a, a piece of technology from 20 years ago and you can start to see, you can see how all this stuff evolves. So, um, Early on when we were doing the podcast, I kind of mentioned that I have like this horde of old stuff. My office, if I turned the camera just this way, you'd understand. My, I'm not going to do it because I'd be embarrassed. It's a disaster. But it, 
I got probably 25 computers like within 15 feet of me in various states of dis disrepair or, um, or a, a various function. Um, plus an entire basement that I call the graveyard, which uh, has a big corner of it. I got stuff, I got stuff down there. I, I pull out pieces that I didn't even know I had. <laughs> um, and a lot of consumer technology too. So I, uh, I, we pick out one on every show, almost every show, as long as we have time for it. And I kind of talk about where it came from, why I have it, you know, where I ended up with it and why it was, I, I try to keep, especially in the consumer devices, stuff that's relevant or significant in some way. Um, rather than just random crap, but I have a lot of that too. <laughs> so I'm going on what uh, show 96. I've probably done about 90, about at least 90 hardware picks. Wow. Just and this is all stuff I own that is physically in my house. Nice. Until my wife threatens to leave me. <laughs> <laughs> Almost all of it is stuff that you have used too. Every now and again, you'll pull something out that's still in the box, but for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's stuff that has been used or had a purpose. And um, some of it is stuff that I've bought, you know, just, you know, I've been a garage sale or, or, or whatever. And I see them like, oh, oh, like I, I want that for the museum. I got a pretty cool museum of phones. So I got like um, the first Android phone, the T-Mobile G1. And I've got a um, couple, I'm not a big Apple guy, but I got a couple old Apple products. I've got, I got old brick Motorola phones, you know, that are like this big. Um, uh, the first StarTac, I've got oh, the first right. phone with a color with a color camera. First phone with a uh, the first phone that came with a color display in the United States. Uh, you know, just a lot of stuff like that. I try to find a significant things, and, and then tons of just tons of IT stuff, ThinkPads and desktops and graphics cards and processors and memory cards. I need help. No. <laughs> now, <laughs> you don't have you don't have all this technology junk. Uh, so to speak, but you collect lizards or something like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a rumor that I may have some iguanas around uh, the the unit here. <laughs> just kind of randomly, just walking through, <laughs> wandering about. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you poke around in a closet. You never know what you might find. Oh, I love he's, he's picking up on a lot of our little memes on our yeah on our show. I poke, we we make many references to the iguanas. That's funny. I just I heard it in one of the episodes, and I'm like, I I started uh, I started laughing. I'm like, like I said, you guys have a good time, and and just uh, you just have fun, and that's I think that's what makes the the learning technology and learning what's going on out there better than just listening to somebody drone on about. Yeah, here's the stats for this, and who gives a who cares? You know what we <laughs> hear is we want to hear what can. What can, what new idea can I use that may may or may not work for me in my business, but I can at least hear somebody else's perspective and try it and see if it'll work for me. You know that type of thing. So. Yeah, and that's not a, and, and not in just business um, stuff either. I like to say that the the product reviews we don't do a ton of them, but we do we do product reviews. But unlike a lot, you can get product reviews all over the internet. I mean, there's a million sites for it. But our reviews are, are very tailored to the, to the perspective of a, of a reseller, which is very different because the things that end users would find interesting, notable, or, or useful is not necessarily what resellers want to know about a product. So we right. tend to focus on, on things like, you know, how is it easy to integrate? How long does it take to set up? Um, does, it, does it tend to fail a lot? You know, like, what's the margins? You know, like the, some of those kinds of very important questions that resellers want to know. That's good. And again, practical knowledge. So, all right, Matt, question for you. Yes. NVIDIA or AMD? Oh, oh man, you're, you're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> uh, if, if, I had, if, I had, if I had to go on the value scale right now, I would say AMD. Um, I just helped my niece uh, build her first gaming machine. We used uh, an RX 580 in it, uh, which Right now, thanks to thanks to uh, cryptocurrency, uh, uh, graphics cards cost more than um, a kidney <laughs> yeah. uh, to get a good one. So uh, the NVIDIA cards, I, they certainly have a performance advantage right now, but um, the the value I, I I see it as AMD at the moment. But I go back and forth. I I use them both. Okay. Just depends. Right. Don't have any favorites. I, I will say for for processors, I'm historically more of an Intel guy. But uh, I'm I'm very very happy to see AMD's um, 
resurgence in desktop processors and that they're still kicking it and doing a great job. So <clears throat> very cool. Yeah, I I'm an Intel and NVIDIA snob, so I just <laughs> <laughs> I have I have a two I have two uh, quad core or two two dual core uh, Nvidia cards in my current desktop. So okay, uh, and you know what really makes me mad though? I'm sorry, Rich. Just close your ears for a minute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what really makes me mad is I can't find a 2080 Ti that somebody hasn't bought up and wants to sell for double the price of what a regular one costs. It's it's. I've got. I'm still rocking a 980 GTX Ti, and it's it's perfectly fine for what I do for right now. Well, not to mention too, they're they're buying them all up, and and, and if they and if they're going to resell them, yeah, they're double the price. But the price is already ridiculous. It, it is. <laughs> I don't know what else to do because you know I didn't jump up to the 1080, and it's like you get a kind of a boost, but anyways, side tangent. So, Rich, what types of things are you into? <laughs> Besides writing, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a big local sports fan uh, here. A uh, uh, Seattle Mariners season ticket holder, which means that uh, I'm a, a glutton for disappointment. Uh, and a, uh, <laughs> it's like bring it on. Uh, uh, Seahawks fan as well, and uh, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, that, you know, the, 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 those are probably my two. Uh, I, I'm not a big gamer, as Matt knows. Matt, Matt has been trying to to work on me a little bit uh, in in that regard, and you know, he'll, he'll kind of feed me a game every now and again. But uh, yeah, those are probably my two big uh, two biggest non work passions. Okay, and I see a lot of books behind you, so I'm assuming that you you like to read also. It, 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 yes, I do. I do quite a bit, and and like we were talking about on paper. Yes. Now, okay. So here's a question for you. So, do you prefer paper or Audible? Oh, paper, paper, a hundred and hundred percent, and twice on Sunday. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm definitely. I, I, I really like to have the, the book in my hand. And even though I know realistically, I'm probably not going to reread it. I like having the option, having it on the shelf. So, yeah, I'm, I'm old school when it comes to how you read books. Now, a lot of people will say, well, I don't have time to read, yada, yada. And I, and I go, well, you can, it, it's kind of, to me, it's like a podcast. It's kind of like this show, to be honest with you. There are people that watch a show every week, and it's not as big as the audience that listens to the audio podcast, because I think that's a little more mobile with the YouTube channel and stuff like that. But uh, there's still a fair amount of people that, you know, they like to have it on the background or whatever and listen to what we're talking about. And plus, I kind of let it wait a few days before I bring it out in audio format anyways. So you can get it quicker on YouTube, but you know, it is what it is, but I, I go back and forth on that too. I, I cause I kind of like the physical book. It's just, I don't have the time to sit down and actually read, or I, I guess I should say that I don't take the time because you know, I'm blowing up zombies or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No question about it. it. It is hard to, uh, uh, to make that time. And, and so, and for me, um, you know, quite often the best time to crack open a book is like right before I'm um, going to bed, um, which means like, you know, f five pages in, I'm asleep. Um, so, so it, it can take me a little while to, to march through a book, but, uh, yeah, I do enjoy it. One last question for you guys. And then we'll, uh, we'll kind of wrap up and get on out of here. But do you guys, before you started a podcast, were either one of you listening to podcasts? I'll, I'll start with that first. Um, uh, one of my big motivators to, to do a podcast was that I, I do listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, and I've, what I've always liked about them is the fact that I can, I can consume them doing other things. I, I almost never just sit down and like listen to a podcast on the couch with my eyes closed. I'm, I'm, I'm either cutting the grass, driving the kids around, uh, doing dishes, uh, it's always a passive listening activity to me, but um, that's how I uh, absorb a lot of podcasts, and I and I, I love that format. And I, I know you guys are talking about books too, because I I, um, I I like Audible, and I and I do listen, I do usually have one book going in Audible, but I also have um, lots of paper books that I that I do as well, because I also love to read, and I find that I can read a book faster in, on paper. But I also find that depending on who's narrating it on Audible, it will either I'll either enjoy it or it'll drive me crazy. 
So <laughs> that's true. Um, I don't know how much um, Rich. Did you listen to a lot of podcasts before we started? Um, no, no. Um, I, I've definitely gotten more into that um, once we started doing it. But uh, and I stood on. I, I don't know that I'm an enormous podcast listener, but I, I definitely do that. You know, and, and I do it the same way um, you do. Apparently, just in terms of it's it's something that I have on. I mean, a lot on the weekend, basically, when I'm sort of around and catching up on errands and and stuff like that. I um, I really enjoy uh, basically, it, you know, it's a handful of shows that I listen to regularly, but uh, uh, I really enjoy uh, having that content handy when I'm doing the dishes or whatever. Jeff, Jeff, tell me if you 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 listen to podcasts. I'm gathering as well, right? Yes. So I've been. So give me a couple that you listen to. I'm always looking for new ones. Oh, well, <laughs> let, me, let me pull out my app <laughs> to tell you off the top of my head. Uh, let's see. Obviously, I listen to your guys' show because I just found it a couple weeks ago. Um, uh, uh, the Mike Tech Show, which is uh, in Mike Smith. He's in the Philadelphia area, and he's been basically talking about tech for years. He was doing it part-time, got laid off from his job, and he's doing it full-time now. And a uh, good friend of ours. So uh, listen to that one. Security now, just because I like, I used to listen to a lot of Twitch shows back in the day, but security now, just to keep up on the tidbits of things that are happening and having a very, very intelligent guy explain, not really in layman's terms, because you got to sit there and parse the information, but in to where I can go, hey, is this something I really need to be worried about for me and my customers? Or is it something that I can just go, yeah, it's 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 a bad thing, but it's not as bad as everybody's painting it out to be. So, um, yeah, no, security now is a great one. Uh, I'm with you. I used to listen to a lot more Twitch shows too. I think I only listen to Security Now and Windows Weekly. I think they're the only two that I listen to. Now, since you're a geek, I will <laughs> tell you this one that friend. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm sorry if I offended you, geek nerd, whatever you want to call me. Um, I take them all very lovingly as compliments. Exactly. <laughs> One of the podcasts that a friend of mine, John Dubinsky, just uh, told me the other day was, uh, and I don't know who does this, but it's Wolverine, The Long Night, and it's a Marvel um, like novella, and it's uh, it's actually very. They just started it, and I think they've done some other shows. They've got some sci-fi shows and stuff like that. This is probably one of the better uh, fiction type, just entertainment things to listen to in the background that uh, I enjoy driving in the car. Um, just for entertainment purposes, and hey, it's free. I mean, they got a little bit of advertising in there, but it's uh, it's good. Um, and then there's, you know, obviously I I listen to uh, the, our other sister show, Podnets Pro, uh, on its on its network. Uh, computer Computer Business Marketing with uh, Matthew Rodella is another one that's uh, that's out there um, talking about all the marketing that uh, you know business owners have to use in this business, and you know, kind of what works, what doesn't work. Or at least things to try that uh, that might help you. So, um, but though, yeah, those are some of them. I go through. I will listen to podcasts for a while and then kind of recycle them and, and try to find something new. I do listen to some podcasting podcasts that uh, just kind of. I, I like to stay abreast of what's going on in the industry as far as podcasting, kind of numbers and where people are at. And there's a lot of misinformation that comes to that stuff. So I I try to keep up as we all do in whatever it is we're doing. But, um, and I forgot, now that you asked me that question, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> all good choices. All good choices. There's a few in there that I, uh, that I listen to as well. Um, be interesting to compare notes. There's a few that I kind of cherry pick ep episodes with too. Like I'll read the description and I'm like, that. nah, I'm not interested in that. But exactly. um, yeah. Now, one of the ones I just signed up for was the uh, Anon Tech podcast, and I didn't realize they had a uh, podcast either. And it, it sounds like they talk about hardware, and so uh, just starting to get into that one too. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I like hardware, but a lot of times I actually go to my friends in the industry that do this stuff. They'll build the white boxes, and I'll ask them the information. Hey, what should I be using today? Because I am so far away from a lot of that stuff. I just want, I just give me a list. I'll go buy the list. I, I can put the computer together. That's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, it, there's a lot of things out there that 
I didn't realize all the different things and they make it so confusing sometimes with the, uh, you know, the different processors out there. And I just bought a, uh, an Intel 8086, which was cheaper than the 5930 I bought two and a half years ago. And it's a much, much better processor. It's quick. It's fast. It's, it does everything I need to do. Um, and it really boosted my speeds up on, you know, six cores, which do you really need six cores? I don't know. Anyways, it's not a hard Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you, what are you, what is this crazy uh, talk? Of course you do. Just like uh, a 2080 Ti, not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do, you know what, Rich, we were doing them for a while. I, I don't know if I've done one in a while, but we were doing like a, I would do a build, you know, I can remember what yeah. the name of the, what the, what that yeah. stick was. It was something like, let's make, or whatever. Yeah. It, it has been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We should. I, I used to do a lot more writing uh, for the magazine and website uh, than I've had time to do just due to a lot of the other things that I that I work on. But um, yeah, it sounds like it would be it would be good to go back to that. And you, you'd find interesting if I would say, oh, let's here's we're going to make a, uh, you know, a, a workstation designed for CAD. And I think we did one that was like, let's build a, a micro workstation. So I, yeah. you know, went through and put together, you know, a, a build that was basically like building a full workstation and in, in like a micro ATX form factor. It was pretty crazy. Um, so we do, so we, we try to do some of that stuff and we'll try to do some more of that stuff. I think there is a market for, for that as, as you were saying. <laughs> it's, you know, it'd be nice to have enough time in the day where we could accomplish all the things that we wanted to <laughs> throughout the year. But uh, yeah, sometimes you got to pick and choose. And, and I feel that's, that way in this business too, is I, a lot of times I, it, we've let our, our listeners know that, you know, you can go out there, you can try anything you want to try and you'll figure out the things that you like and you'll figure out the things that you don't like and you keep the things that you like and are profitable and the rest of the stuff that you kind of don't like, some of it you have to keep, but there's a lot of it that you can, you can give off to somebody else and let them do that through your business or whatever. And, uh, it just, it, it makes it, Nobody wants to be in a in a grind of doing something that they don't want to do on a regular basis. So, and same thing goes for who you're doing it for. For yeah. that matter, it's like you know, firing the clients who make your life miserable. An, an important discipline. Exactly, <laughs> and sometimes hard to do. So it's, yeah. uh, but these are all good reminders. And again, that's why I I like what you guys are doing and in, in the stuff that you're you're bringing to the table and in. I'll just say, it, just keeping it real. That's, that's what I keep going back to. It's like, there's the real people. And then there's the, the fake, I want to be real, but don't know how to be. They call those androids, right? The it's, fake people. Exactly. <laughs> or terminators. Uh, either way. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I really enjoyed having you guys on the show and I'm glad we we're able to kind of go off the cuff a little bit and, and maybe learn a little bit more about you that, maybe people out there don't really know and kind of, you know, dive into the things that you guys are doing. But if you wanted to give us just a place where people can go and get more information and share that information, go ahead and do that now. And, uh, we'll, uh, get on out of here. Well, the best place to go, um, to learn about the channel pro network is channelpronetwork.com. That's, that's where you're going to find the, the news and articles that we're posting up there uh, daily. Like Matt was saying before you, you can find, uh, our podcast um, from there. Uh, there's a, a little, I wouldn't call it a podcast, but there's sort of like a five, 10 minute video I do every week that um, shows up on Mondays on that site. Um, the, the, the webinars we do, the bloggers we affiliate with. So the, you know, uh, ground zero for everything channel pro network is channelpronetwork.com. That's where I would send people first. Awesome. And we'll definitely have that in the show notes, Matt, anything to add? Or are, you, are you good? No, just uh, yeah. You can find our podcast on the website, but if you if you uh, are interested based on the discussion, you can go to iTunes. You can go to uh, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, pretty much anywhere any anywhere you get podcasts, you should be able to find it. And if not, we have a, a an RSS link you can throw on any podcast app. Uh, you can get that on the on the website. But uh, no, thanks for thanks for having us. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Hopefully next time, if we ever come back, hopefully we can talk more hardware. You seem like a guy who likes to talk I'm, talk I'm nerd. That. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you want to uh, come join us live for the computer repair podcast every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern over at podnets.com forward slash CRP live. Join in on the conversation by hanging out in the chat room. And you can also send an email to podnuts at podnets.com. 
ask a question, leave a comment or whatever, or you can leave your lovely voice in a voicemail at 734-335-1000. I want to thank everyone for listening and subscribing to the show. We'll see you next time on the Computer Repair Podcast.